All right, one of the best adaptive advantage of having seeds is that your embryo comes with its own food supply. All right, so you can plant a seed. It can be dormant. These were dormant for about two years. And you plant them even in a very low nutrient environment, like this just plain old peat moss kind of stuff here. They come with their own nutrients, so they have a chance to grow, kind of boost up. They get a starting advantage. And then they start catching the sunlight. All right, so seed plants. We got two major groups, um, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm pops up first. They evolve from ferns. Just four phyla you need to learn for gymnosperms. The cycads, the ginkgos, the nidophytes, and the conifers. Right, take a look at each one of these. All right, the cycads. Think uh, ancient dinosaur Jurassic palm kind of stuff. Most of these are either extinct or critically endangered. Still a few left in Hawaii. Uh, thrive during the Mesozoic, um, but again, not many left now. They got multi-flagellated sperm, just like ferns, and some have actual kind of like pollination go on with beetles and insects. All right, So they're kind of like angiosperms, but again, basically extinct. The ginkgos. Now that's a phylum. It's only got one species left on Earth. Um, doesn't really grow in the wild very much, except eastern China, western Japan. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't do too hot out there. Um, but it grows all over the world in cities, because we like to plant ginkgo trees. Ginkgo trees actually have separate male and female trees. Uh, male and female live on different plants. When, whenever that's the case, we call it dioecious, which means two houses, all right? The thing about ginkgo trees is that we love the male plants and hate the female ones, because the female ones are the ones producing the seeds, and they're covered in this nasty pulp that smells like uh, rotting baby diarrhea or something. So a lot of nurseries try not to carry the female plants. Wow, ginkgos sound really neat. I bet they're pretty in the fall. But I'd like to talk about the next gymnosperm phylum, the nidophytes. Yeah? Yeah? What about them? Well, I know that they have three genera, Needum, Ephedra, and Willwitchia. Needum and Willwitchia are pretty cool, but Ephedra, Utah's famous for that one. It grows all over the place, especially in the south. Yeah, it does. You know the common name for it? Yeah, it's Mormon tea. Yeah, do you know why they call it that? Well, I heard that it's because the pioneers drank it, tea made from it, in order to, you know, walk for longer, pulling handcarts and stuff. Yeah, but... No, for real. That's where it gets its name. It's because they would drink it and get high. It's basically meth. Yeah, but... It's true. Hmm... This stuff here, you mean ephedra, Mormon tea? Yes, I heard you can get high from it, and that's why they call it Mormon tea. Um, we're not so sure about that. Yeah, we're not sure. <laughs> really? To get high? That seems a bit fishy. Huh? Fish? I love fish. After all, ephedra is famous for basically being meth. Well, you know, pseudoephedrine and all that, it's, you get high from it. Yeah, but that can't be right because it doesn't grow anywhere between Illinois and Utah. Fair enough. But I bet when they got here, they drank it and got high. Yes, that's pretty well documented. Hey, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> um, um, teacher, teacher. Yeah? Can we stop talking about people getting high and learn about the last group of, you know, the conifers? Fine, we'll talk about the conifers. They're the largest group of gymnosperms, after all. You want to learn about their life cycle? Yes. That's exactly what I want to learn about. 
All right, so the conifer life cycle. Um, remember, alternation of generations, just like all land plants. So we start out with our spore fight. It's making spores, but it's making two different kinds of spores because it's what? Really? Nobody? Well, fine. I'll answer it myself. It's heteros. All right. So heterosporous means it's making a female and a male spore. Okay. Those spores grow into what? Seriously, no one. Gametophytes. We got two different kinds. We got female gametophyte here, ovule. The male gametophyte, pollen. All right. So meiosis is happening. We're getting our gametophyte generation, and that's a whole plant right there. It's a gametophyte generation, that little pollen grain. All right. So they meet up with the female gametophyte ovule, all right. and then we get um, karyogamy. Okay. And so now we've got our sporophyte. That's it right there, inside the seed. All right. So grown inside the seed dependent on gametophyte tissue is an embryo all right so we got some food reserves packed in there that's from the gametophyte we've got the seed coating from the original sporophyte over here that was surrounding the ovule and then we've got our little embryo growing inside the seed all right seed lands germinates starts growing and presto we've got another mature sporophyte ready to make spores